Hey, Dr. Ojo Karen. Hey, Anna. How you we doing? Are Live. <laughs> We're here tonight to talk about PCOS. Mm -hmm. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. That's what it stands for. And it is PCOS Awareness Month. So I've seen a fair bit of information out there about it, which is a good thing because <laughs> these things we need to talk more about. What are the main misunderstandings around PCOS that you know of? First, let me say, I'm so excited. Yeah, that there's so much more information coming out about PCOS. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's really great not just to inform people, but also to clarify a few things too. And so one misunderstanding that I think I hear a lot of is I have a whole bunch of cysts on my ovaries, so I have PCOS. No. Uh, a PCOS is a condition, it's termed polycystic ovarian syndrome because the ovaries take on appearance of having many cysts. And the way I like to explain it is that these cysts are basically those follicles that you did not ovulate, that have a little bit more fluid on the inside of them and they look cystic. The ovaries are cystic structures because they have follicles in them. So they can, because you have a whole bunch, they can look like you have polycysts, many cysts. Um, and PCOS, what happens, the woman is not ovulating usually normally, when I say normally, monthly or at a frequency that's between 21 to 35 days uh, within that time range. She's not ovulating because of a dysregulation of uh, hormones, um, mainly her androgens. And then also it is a metabolic syndrome. And so those two things combined uh, prevent her from, from ovulating at a frequency that is within that range. And so one thing you can find are all these follicles that haven't ovulated on her ovaries and they take on a pretty characteristic appearance. Uh, we do uh, in the GYN world or radiology world term it as a chain of pearls. So on the ovaries, it does look like a chain of pearls just going around the ovary, little, 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 little uh, dots that you see on the ultrasound. Uh, and those are the follicles that are uh, that are not ovulated. And that's, that, that's how they look like cysts. So that is one misconception I hear. Another misconception or um, misunderstanding that I hear often is mm, I have hairs that grow in areas that I don't want them to. And so I have PCOS. Well, you may, you may have PCOS. Uh, that is uh, a physical condition or a physical finding that can occur in women with PCOS. I talked about that dysregulation of androgens. Androgens are one way I term them male-like hormone, easy to understand. Uh, so what would a male-like hormone do? What would an androgen do? Well, it can increase body hair in, in, in certain areas, on the face, on the abdomen, on the chest, uh, just to name a few. Um, but just because you have hairs there doesn't mean that you have PCOS. So I think those are probably the um, main misconceptions that I hear. Another is um, I haven't had my period in a long time, so I have PCOS. You may, because that's another finding in a woman that has PCOS. Again, we go back to those uh, uh, androgen dysregulation. We go back to not ovulating. So if you don't ovulate, you're not going to have a period. And so, yeah, you may, but there are a ton of other reasons not to have your period. Mm -hmm. uh, so just because you don't see your period regularly, doesn't mean you have PCOS. And so if a person thinks that they might have PCOS, what are the steps to identify that they that those symptoms are pointing to PCOS? Very good question. And so if you have any of those symptoms that I named, right, you can get worked up to see if you have PCOS. I think that's a smart thing to do. So you go see your uh, healthcare provider. And so a certain number of things should be done. One, an evaluation with the discussion. That's number one and physical exam. And so really for your provide to help your provider get a better understanding of what your menstrual cycle is like, how long has it been irregular? Is it something that you've always had happen to you? Um, how old are you? Are you 15 years old and you're having irregular periods versus 28 years old and having very irregular periods? So, you know, um, that's a, 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 a big thing to distinguish between um, um, when we talk about age. So, First, meeting your provider and having a discussion talking. The second thing that can be done is a laboratory examination. And so that's assessing some of those uh, labs that deal with 
androgens uh, and, the, and your metabolic status, uh, having those labs uh, evaluated. Oftentimes, women with PCOS are also pre-diabetic. Again, we talk about the metabolic syndrome that comes along with it. Um, and so having your having lab work done is key. Uh, another thing to do is also have ultrasound about what things we see in women, women with PCOS, uh, the chain-like appearance or pearl-like uh, appearance of uh, cysts on the ovaries. Um, and so when you take all three of those components in, in mind, and you think about them. We we use certain criteria to say, hey, yes, this woman likely has PCOS. And usually two out of those three components that we talked about, discussion, understanding what your periods are like, having lab values that are significant, or having a finding on ultrasound, we can use that criteria to go ahead and make the diagnosis of PCOS. And so then, Please tell me that there's some good treatments. There are so many good treatments to polycystic ovarian syndrome. And for the first good treatment is knowing that you are not alone. Even though I said at the beginning, that's not everyone that has these symptoms or has a symptom has PCOS, there are a good number of women with PCOS. And unfortunately, um, because of the obesity epidemic, um, there that number is growing. And so when I think about I really think about it in a subset of two types of women. One where it's more is mediated more by weight, uh, and, and um, your weight is driving your metabolic issue, uh, driving you to have that increase in androgens. Um, and one where it's more of a genetic component. And so you can see both women that are overweight and women that are very, very that are uh, normal weight or um, within normal BMI range with PCOS. Um, both resulting from different uh, uh, um, causes, but um, you know, um, move forward to have the same effect. And um, so, the main treatment first for the subset of main treatment first is depending on what age you are. You have to decide: do you want to become pregnant or not? Uh, if you are at a part of your life that you want to become pregnant, then that will affect what treatment options are recommended for you versus if you're not. Uh, and then the next step is to consider the weight component. Is there a weight component there? Is there obesity? Because if there is, just 5% of your weight loss can actually stimulate you to ovulate and can help to reverse those effects of PCOS and um, um, having irregular periods. And so how do we lose weight? We've talked about this multiple times on this program, which is good nutrition, and consistent exercise. And so just losing 5% of your weight can help you ovulate and can help you with your PCOS. Other than that, there are some really good medications uh, for women with PCOS. And so we oftentimes use birth control pills uh, or any other form of hormonal contraception. One, to help regulate your periods, but two, to also help keep the endometrial lining thin. So that's the inside of your uterus. Women with PCOS, I've already said, they have a high risk of having prediabetes. Women with PCOS also have a high risk of having endometrial cancer if they continue to have irregularity in their periods. They continue to have long periods of time where they're not menstruating. They have a higher risk of having endometrial cancer. And so we use these hormonal medications to one, regulate their periods, and two, to also help protect the endometrium to prevent any type of abnormality from occurring because of um, potential thickening because you're not having your period monthly. It's okay not to see your period if you're using hormonal contraception because the hormonal contraception is keeping that lining thin. Uh, so again, decreasing the risk of any type of um, endometrial pathology. Um, there are also really good meds to help the metabolic side of PCOS. And so use of medications like metformin um, can help to reduce the metabolic effect of PCOS in women who are hoping to ovulate on their own. If you get that metabolic side controlled, uh, you may start to ovulate. For those women who know they have elevated male-like hormone, elevated androgens, um, there are medications that can help to just lower those um, male-like hormones that you can take. 
Um, some of the contraceptives, specifically the birth control pill, can also help to lower those numbers. So there are good meds out there. There are good treatment options out there that are also not medical, but we also come back to the discussion of good nutrition uh, and exercise. This is so informative because I um, didn't know that much about PCOS and it points to me to the need for awareness because it's easy to think awareness. Okay, so now I know about it. So what? But I think part of the thing that keeps people quiet is if they are dealing with PCOS and then think that other people won't know what that means and how they should then behave or what support they should get. Yeah. Then, um, and then the less we talk about it, then the less pressure there is or enthusiasm, I should say, is a positive way around coming up with treatment treatments and things to help people. So I'm thinking a lot about when we had our conversation around endometriosis and then you recently shared an article that you found talking about menopause and how these topics, the more we talk about them, the, the less alone you can feel. And then that takes away some of the mental anguish of dealing with these things as well. You know, I think it's really important if you have a known condition, and right now we're talking about PCOS, but to look for support group. There are many good support groups for women with PCOS, uh, and we can add them into our comment section later. You know, you're not alone. Oftentimes women with PCOS actually have a lot of depression because of the PCOS. And oftentimes it's because of um, the excess weight if they're overweight and, and, and the uh, male pattern hair growth. You know, I do feel for women that experience that. And there are good options to help um, to help uh, reduce the hair growth. There are good options to help remove the hair growth if you're using shaving or depilatory or waxing um you know the hairs are going to grow back they can grow back thicker especially in women with pcos but laser works well for women with pcos laser can be expensive i do understand you want to make sure you're going to someone who knows what they're doing if they're an esthetician dermatologists are really great places to uh, start for uh laser hair removal you may be able to get your insurance company to pay for it sometimes it's a long shot but there is an out-of-pocket fee a lot of people have good plans uh, to help you get that that bill paid down um, and there are a lot of really good lasers out there now for women of color um, mm. before okay. lasers were really worked really well on women that had lighter skin and darker hair because of the way the pigment uh, attracts the laser and what the laser is attracted to. But there's some really good lasers out there now for women that have darker skin. And the laser women with PCOS may not get you to be hair free permanently, but what it will do is help to reduce the, the hair growth and, and then also make the hairs a lot thinner. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is when you have hair growth in certain areas, you may also have hyperpigmentation because of the disruption of the skin due to the hair follicle or for some women that have folliculitis or ingrown hairs because of just where the hairs are growing and that how thick that hair becomes and how curly it can become depending on your, your hair pattern. The laser also can help with pigmentation too. And so you know, you can really get a good bang for your buck by investing in uh, laser hair removal, laser hair reduction, really what we're talking about PCOS. And I say, I, I emphasize the reduction part because when you have that metabolic uh, condition, when you have that hormonal dysregulation that is helping to feed the hair growth, you still have that occurring. So that needs to be dealt with too. Uh, and so the laser, again, definitely will help to reduce if it's not helping to permanently remove. Mm -hmm. Well, so often I think the things that might embarrass people are the things that we want to just hide away from and not address. And so I think the great thing about Awareness Month and us having this conversation now is to say, number one is that I hope that it reduces levels of shame and also just shines a spotlight on the fact that there are treatments and things that can be done to help yeah. improve quality of life. Yeah, you know, I think you can feel stigmatized when you have something that's outside the norm. You know, I'll tell you right now, I use laser on my face because I have a mustache. You don't see it now because I get it lasered. <laughs> I was going to say, who doesn't have hairs growing out of weird places? Who? And that's the thing, you know, when we start talking about it, right? 
we start realizing, oh, you have this problem too. Oh, that's happening to you too. Yes, it's happening to me. And so there you do become more comfortable when you're having these conversations and you become a bit more, we become a bit more open as a society where no one's perfect, right? And so we're all doing something to help us be the better version of, our, of ourselves. And there's that's fine. So now I think if there's anything to say, especially in the month of awareness, that awareness of I'm not by myself. Even if you're not aware of all the information, ins and outs, stats and all, just being aware of I am not by myself is a big, is a big thing. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Edra Karens. Thank you guys for being here with us and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you.